everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar. 2020 has been a most challenging year for all, which has affected every aspect of our lives, including the method of schooling for our children. Our speaker tonight, Michelle Lesseuse, will delve into the pros and cons of online education. Michelle has spent the last 20 years specialising in the integration of technology into education. She is passionate about bringing global leading practice to South African teachers and students in a way which is locally relevant and sustainable. Her mission is to support educators, parents and students alike to succeed in today's digital world. Michelle will be interviewed by our famed TV and radio host, Ilana Africa Brillenkamp, who certainly needs no introduction. Over to you, Ilana. Hi, thank you so much for that introduction. And Michelle Asus, it is really an honor for me to be able to chat to you. Hi, I said all the words that every mother and educator would like to dream of. We love the words support moving forward. And one would imagine why this discussion at the end of a pandemic, but I wanna get this out of the way soon enough saying that 2021 is upon us and we're gonna to need to do some kind of planning. So it's really wonderful to chat to you. Let's get started. Online learning. Apparently, it's different to homeschooling. What is online learning? Well, firstly, good evening and uh, thanks for having me um, this evening. So I, I think um, we can really, uh, I think we've all been in a pand really in a situation which has challenged us in how we see schooling and how we see learning. And um, the expectation of teachers, of parents, of school leaders has since March has really been something quite unexpected. I mean, not since World War II have schools closed on a global basis. So 160 million children were out of school from March. And I think what we really have to understand is that when everyone switched to remote learning in March, and that is not the model for homeschooling, or that is not the model for online education. What happened was emergency crisis management. Yep. And we also, there was what happened also in March and April was a very, we could see that private schools could easily switch to remote learning and Zoom lessons, but um, the disadvantage and the inequality and the access gap got bigger and bigger. So I think when we talk tonight about what is online education, I think we're gonna explore more the difference between what is homeschooling, what is blended learning, going to school, but still having online learning, and what is joining online courses and programs. And I think, I think everyone's experience of online um, education has been very different over the last few months. And I think that's what we're gonna talk about and how we can take the best of that and our learnings and move forward into 2021. Well, I think you just said it. And I mean, earlier having a chat with you, online learning for adults has never been unusual. You know, you didn't just only go to the library when you are studying remotely or through an independent institution. You had different aids and different resources in order to build, educate yourself and to move forward. And yeah, our children in a pandemic, uh, I think we can't go backwards per se, where we say that they only have the teacher and school we need more tools. So would you say that online learning is another aid? And like you say, blended learning where there's school and online learning? So I think um, what's important to note is that educators and education conferences and Terence, we've always been talking that education needs to change. And we always have been talking about it needs to be more relevant, it needs to be more authentic, it needs to prepare our students for the fourth industrial revolution. And for whatever reason, the education sector has been quite slow to adapt. And for good reasons, but it has. So I am really hoping that this has been the leapfrog to take us forward into re-evaluating what how technology can enhance teaching and learning. So I think when we say we can't go back, I think there are two reasons we, we cannot go back to the way we, we were teaching and learning before. One is because we have to take, we have to use a technology to accelerate in the best way possible. And two is um, 
I mean, I am not a child psychologist in any in any way. My my field is education technology, but I think we have to acknowledge the impact of children living through a pandemic and the social well-being and the needs of the children. And so I think when we combine that, we need to look at a different form of education that technology can ad deliver so many advantages and benefits to meet the needs of the education we need for our children. And I think that's really important. And that's where we need to look at. So it's not just, and it's not about children sitting at home on Zoom lessons. And it's not just about children sitting at home on the screen doing work themselves. There are three buzzwords you will learn, you'll keep hearing over and over again. One is um, synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. So any good online program will have synchronous learning, which is live instruction and asynchronous learning, which is self-paced instruction. And then the next buzzword in education is the hybrid model. And I think that's where we see the trend globally is going to a good blend of that, those, that balance. So if you're talking about this balance, I mean, I, I love technology. There are so many advantages. Look at tonight, we are on a live webinar and I'm sitting in Pretoria and I assume you're in Joburg. Uh, many Thursdays, we've had conversations with our guests who are sitting overseas. Uh, earlier today, my day was filled with gamers who play games and who earn money for a living through technology and connecting via the internet. So I hear you in terms of not just learning, but also in terms of our careers, there's advantages of connecting internationally and digitally with with other people but in the ideal world what would education look like i mean if you say that there's different forms and you have these buzzwords is it a case of schooling and then additional learning online or is it a case of well we can get away with everything online and it looks like online learning and homeschooling so that's a very big big question so i uh, I think um, the first thing is that we have to look at what the benefits of online education are and what the weaknesses of online education and how they fit in. So one of the biggest benefits of online education is that it allows personalization for a child. So it really does. So it, the, when you go into a class and there's one teacher teaching 25 children, it is it is very one size. Whereas online learning, the biggest advantage of technology is the artificial intelligence and the data that will path children's learning paths so that you'll be able to see their weaknesses and their strengths. And that is a very big strength of online learning. The other big strength of online learning is the global connectedness and um, using technology to explain concepts that would not It'd otherwise be quite difficult to explain and I think my, my I'm a big I'm a very big um, fan of hybrid learning and that there has to be a place for what technology does best use technology for what human interaction does best you do interaction for but over and above that is what suits the needs of the child so mm -hmm. I get a million people phoning me and going Mish you're in education, what do you think is the best school in South Africa? And um, my answer is so standard, is that it really does depend on your child. Yeah. And so there are certain children who homeschooling will suit. There's certain uh, school, uh, children who need a different balance of a hybrid model, but yeah. whichever model you're in now, there has to be a, pro a proportion of online education. And it's not technology for technology's sake, it's technology that will give you the experience, the personalization and the assessment and the digital skills. So they, you cannot be in a system that doesn't have online education, but I, I would not be in a system that is 100% only one screen. Wonderful stuff. Well, if you just joined in, Michelle Lesseuse is chatting with us. She's an expert in education. Uh, the words that came up so far were support, leading 2021, and of course, online learning. And that's the one thing that we are discussing. To find out more about her, iSchool Africa. Also, Think Ahead Education Solutions, where we're learning about 
online solutions for our children. I've been saying that, you know, when it comes to adult learning, we've been uh, tapping into different resources all our lives. And now it seems like after a pandemic, education is being pushed into a direction, hopefully, where we can say, you know what, we need to accelerate and get our children in a better space for sure. There's so many questions around COVID that I want to ask and, and 2020 readiness, um, uh, being in school. What is the impact of COVID-19 on education generally? I mean, surely there are some changes as a result of this pandemic. So I think um, COVID-19 has really forced everyone to look at the how and the what and the where of education. And it really has differentiated what is schooling and what is learning? And what is the benefit of schooling? And what is the benefit of learning? And the key elements that have come out, the big changes have been the role of technology as an accelerator, the role of the parent in education, the role of the educator, the role of the student. Um, I think the big shift and flexibility and access to competency-based learning. So it's not just about sitting there in a certain amount of time in scheduled timetabling, but allowing more personalization, allowing access. And I think what we also need to realize is that because we're on the screens and we got access, the risk of cyber security, the risk of cyber bullying increases. So the importance of training um, our students to be digital citizens is really, really important. Right. And then the other side is the importance of not ignoring relationships and um, students' well-being. And um, there was um, a very interesting research paper that just been done with 53 countries around Africa asking about what is the biggest changes that are going to happen in education in Africa. And uh, I think the one was, the biggest one was, unless the pandemic will cause more inequality if technology is not used better. Wow. So, in, in privileged, in privilege, it will create success, but it needs to be used for um, to create access and equitable education. And the other thing is the importance of relooking the curriculum. So um, making it, I mean, all the respondents were like, we cannot just carry on doing the same um, a curriculum, and we need to make sure it's more relevant and it's more authentic. Um, there's a great professor at the Harvard School of Education who uses, do you know, Mari Kondo, who um, she's that, that, that famous, the famous Japanese woman about yes. anything in your house that doesn't give you joy, throw out. Uh, and uh, I mean, I think that's not relatives. I think it's uh, possessions only. <laughs> but, um, but basically this Harvard, he's like, we need to Mari Kondo the curriculum. Basically like really anything that's not relevant and we need to. And, um, and the bigger, I mean, they said the biggest challenge will be an authentic, relevant curriculum and making sure equitable access to, um, to technology and the right use of technology. And so I'm, I'm very excited because I think it, this, the pandemic is, I mean, I'm sure all the viewers are exhausted now and they've had enough of it and everything. But I think 2021, if we take the learnings from education, will be our students will be more ready. Our children will be more ready for to succeed in a post-COVID world, definitely. Look, resilience was a big word that we also used on our Thursday's discussions. And I think, yes, we are ready and we can't start running. You know, when, you, when you're when you taking off on a flight, I just heard an airplane and it, it's actually a great uh, metaphor. You don't just take off, you know, there's a runway. And so we need time to actually be on that runway. And I think that runway is now before we get to 2021. Where does online learning fit into our children's lives? Uh, I say this lightly, moms who are homeschooling, but I see the homeschooled child in the morning going to the shops with the mother because they're at leisure and they can learn whenever they want. But where does online learning fit into our children's lives? So I am, I'm personally not um, a home learning um, expert, but um, I do, I'm from the home learning uh, people, the home learning um, school leaders and the home learning mothers I work with, there is, they've created very, very strong communities mm. and they've accessed online platforms. And I think that's really important. So, and I think what happens in online learning is there is the structure of the timetable in the school is very different. 
But I think when you evaluate an online program, you also have to see what your role as a parent is in terms of your commitment to, to that time. So, I mean, I am... Um, the one, the one mother that was, I was talking to, she hadn't homeschooled her child and her child's in a wheelchair. And she was saying like, the pandemic's the best thing that's ever happened because she enrolled her child into an online homeschooling solution. And um, now that her child has got access, her child is equitable to the other kids in the class. Um, she doesn't have to carry her up ramps. She doesn't carry her to the toilet. And that made me think about the the equalization of it. But I think I just have to stress that homeschooling in a pandemic is not what online education is about. There are amazing online schools, online programs. There are schools that offer integrated online education that works. And I think that's what's really important that the emergency Zoom learning is not, is not the solution for, for long-term. Well, now that we've established what it is, what is the role of online learning? It sounds like it's additional work for our children and perhaps for us. And also what makes for a good online learning program? How do you know that this is suited to my child's needs and this is an excellent program? So um, an online learning program um, provides um, content and quality of content through technology that otherwise wouldn't be accessible. So it, at, at the way, the level, it should never be, it should never actually just be a teacher who instead of in a classroom is on a, um, it shouldn't just be substitution. It gives an opportunity to get world-class, the best lecturers, the best explanations, it gamify learning, use quizzes, use assessments, and that can be done at home or in the classroom. So that's the first thing is it, it's technology is only as good as its use. So it yeah. needs to, the online learning gives the opportunity for amazing, engaging, motivating learning experiences. When you look at an online program, you need to look at the quality of the content. You need to look at the scope of the content. You need to look at the curriculum. So if you want to, if it's IEB or if it's AS levels, or if it's, um, if it, it, whatever curriculum, you need to look at the personalization. So if your child, does it offer, if your child is faster, does it offer differentiation? If your child has special needs, does it offer remediation? So how, what is the personalization? And I think you also need to look at the role of the parent. Yeah. So if it's online education within a school system, that's fine. If it's online, homeschooling online, what is expected? Because I think the biggest challenge of COVID was that all of a sudden you were a working mom, a teacher, um, a, a house. I mean, it was too much pressure. So I think the role of the parent, you also have to look at the phys physical location. So is it a school? Is it a learning hub? Right. But I think the most important thing is what is that learning experience and does that learning experience suit the needs of your child and and but i must stress again is that your child in any format that they're in in 2021 there must be an online education experience in what they're doing because through that they will get the skills of what they need they will get the digital savviness they'll get the coding they'll get the digital literacy you cannot you cannot not have online education within a system right now that for me is, that's not, not an option. I love how you mentioned coding and actual um, examples of, of good programs or even of the type of content that we, we are looking for. Where do we even start to find resources? I mean, it's hard enough finding a textbook. How do we go online and, and find out where the resources live for these online learning platforms? Like, where do we find it? So, um, there is, there are, I mean, I'm very happy for anyone to message me because depending on where you are and what your needs are, there are different resources. So there are various online schools that offer a full online program if you want to go the route of online school. If you, so it will either be, that will be your child's curriculum or otherwise, if your child's at school, there will be for, um, 
for like there's I mean Khan Academy for example is always a go-to for me because it offers amazing video lessons and extra lessons then there's lab exchange which is um brilliant science and maths lessons from Harvard that are free to use. Um, then you've got like something like NoteShare, which is a group of matrix who've started NoteShare. And what it is, is encouraging matrix students to yeah. put up their notes, their study notes, and share them with other um, students. And then there are different schools that have published their masterclasses. From, where, from what we do is we offer um, Think Ahead, and offers online coding courses, and we um, we offer we offer training in terms of the Apple suite of uh, tools, which create collaboration, creativity, coding, and that also complements the um, the different skills that you need in for today's online learning. You know what makes me excited is the fact that it almost feels like we have uh, accelerated five years quicker. Into, into education that we never would have touched on had we not been in a pandemic. I mean, mm -hmm. I know of a lot of stuff, right? But online learning, uh, you heard about it, but you never saw it as a necessity. And I hear you and I see your, your excitement around it that in 2021 and beyond, it's going to be not just important, it is, um, it's a must. It's such a must. You know, um, a friend of mine, um, her, she says that her favorite quote of the pandemic is that, there are some decades that nothing happens and there are some weeks that decades happen. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's so true. And I think that I, I, I have sat with schools for 20 years exploring why schools need to integrate technology. And only the schools that have been real leaders in their field have taken it on. Now, in the last six months, every school that I've ever met with has phoned and said, oh, can you help us? Can you? And the ones that we've been working with in the last 20 years have had real live experiences. So I think it's yeah. not a new thing. And we as South Africans know that learning was in crisis long before the pandemic, you know? And um, Professor Janssen says a virus doesn't highlight, cause um, inequalities, it highlights them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I think that I, so I think for me, I think we very, it's so important that we take on this and also that we also don't use tech and don't use technology as an answer for everything. It has to be done in a way that offers a learning outcome and a benefit to the child. So if you've got, um, if a child has a screen and is on the screen, it's not online learning. Or if a child now, um, if a school now is has textbooks on um, on a tablet, that's not online engagement. So I think it really is about what is the engagement, what is the experience, and what is the learning that is so important. We've talked now about the benefits and I see that there's a few people that are coming on. Thank you for your questions and you're welcome to ask some because we will be uh, dealing with your questions in a bit. If you had to summarize it to a parent or even an educator, someone that doesn't believe in the system of online learning or someone that wants to know more, what would you say are the key benefits of online learning? And having said that, I also need to know, I mean, you just men mentioned something that, oh, cyber stalking. What are some of the key areas that we need to be aware of? So my question is actually twofold. I'm asking benefits and also what should we be careful of? Um, so the benefits, I think we've chatted. So the benefits on, of online learning are the access to the materials, the global connectedness, uh, the personalization and um, the digital skills. I mean, very, I mean, that's very this basic, okay. I think the things that we, the two things we really need to be aware of is the digital citizenship and making sure our children are safe and are, um, are savvy in terms of um, cyber security. And uh, the other thing is the social and emotional well-being of our children. So I think th that really is um, that that is really the, the the two for me the most important things. Um, I think like when you talk about online learning, um, a lot of um, parents will go, but um, what about the social connections and what about the um, what about sports and what about friends and and the programs that we've worked with, 
The schools have put in place what pastoral care, they've put in place coaches, they've put in place education mentors, they've put in place. And the biggest success I've seen of online learning has been the concept of um, the flipped classroom, which is basically what it means is, is that when we were at school, we, the teacher would give us content and then we'd go home and do assignments and homework. Now the flipped classroom is saying, it doesn't make sense. There's so much content available. We should look at the content by ourselves and work with the teacher to do projects, to do assignments, to do um, exploration. And that's when inquiry-based learning and project-based learning comes in. And that's very important that that's part, if you are going that route of only that there is that exploration Within um, within the um, within the online learning, I can see um, one of the um, in the chats is um, a John Louis, who's um, he's started and heading up an, a new online school called Iva, and their big thing is um, and he can add to the chat is um, he's one of our peers um, is the gamification of learning, and how to engage students through gamification. And so there are, so as long as it, there is that experience, but it's not just, it's not about, oh, okay, they're in front of the screen, let them, that they're home learning or they're online learning. And I think that's what's really critical, uh, important. I think, um, Ilana. And then I also can see in the chat that John has also said um, the, increasing gap in our country, online education and with increasing access to data. And I, I mean, absolutely. I think the a pandemic and the, the acceleration of online learning has the huge ability to create an equitable system, but it also has the huge risk of creating more, um, more um, a, a further gap. So, I mean, we know that in South Africa, 30% of 30% of our children don't have access to the internet. So I think um, if I stand to be corrective, I think that's right. So I um, really hope this is an opportunity to, uh, for us to look at date, different data costs, um, scalable solutions through radio and television, plus access to devices. And I know that there are a lot of innovative solutions in that. So I think um, we seem to have lost our Ilana. So are there any other any other questions, any other comments, any other things you would you as parents or as teachers you'd like to share? So I think um, one of Ilana's um, questions was about how will children be ready for school in 2021? And, um, and I think one thing that's come through quite strongly in all the readings and in all the, is that we need to be aware that a different child and a different parent is going to be attending the um, a different child and a different parent will be attending the schools in 2021. And although that everyone's saying that children can't be affected medically in some way by COVID, I think the emotional impact on children will be huge and um and i think that's what we need to we need to um we need to do so um i think um i'd like to read a quote by um, a woman who heads up pratham in ed education in india and she has said that um reopening schools should be seen like a celebration teachers must set aside the curriculum for a bit and flat, flat plan for a big catch-up for each child and reassess their skills and strengthen their basics, which I think is really such a good way of celebrating where the children are at and the perseverance of what they've um, what they've achieved and what they've gone through. Um, so um, I've just got a note from Ilana that she's uh, trying to log back on. So I think this is a real typical example of the challenges of online education with Ilana disappearing. <laughs> are you back? You're on mute, Ilana. 
I think the one challenge that we've been fearing, Jean-Louis, has caught up with us, and that is the fact that everyone wants to stay connected. At the moment, my Wi-Fi dropped, and I'm connecting with my phone as we speak. So that's one of the disadvantages, I guess, of online learning. But hopefully, in this case, it's not always live content. Am I right, Michelle? Is it yeah. all pre-recorded, or how would one go about to access it? So it's so it's so true because I was watching a presentation on um, yeah. people's biggest challenges. It was done by someone in the UK on people's biggest challenges of working at home, and they were saying that they had to dig deeper because there were a lot of people saying load shedding and they could not work out what it was. <laughs> so it is like it is we have um, different uh, needs, but um, mm -hmm. so as before, it's there's synchronous and there's asynchronous. And any online program will be a combination. So right. synchronous will be what we what we doing now. Asynchronous is pre recorded lessons. It's um, online um, online tutorials, and that it can be done self paced and independent learning. Um, I'm just picking up another comment from um, from one of the um, from one of the audience. And um, as a parent, commonsense.org. Um, Brent, commonsense.org is a great, great resource. So commonsense.org gives advice on cyberbullying, on digital um, etiquette, on how to protect your children, guidance to parents. So that, that is a great, great recommendation. Yeah. I'm actually going to make a note about that now. So commonsense.org. Uh, Brent, thank you so much for your suggestion. I see that there's others coming through. Um, Elan says, really fascinating and interesting thoughts and guidance. Yes, for sure. Isn't it wonderful that we have access to Michelle tonight? Uh, John Louis had another uh, uh, comment that says, our online school is hosting an online education expo. So we must also go and look at this. He says, he says it's called liveexpo.com. When, when we think of all the resources where we are at, it almost feels like online learning for me is something new because, you know, in our world, we were used to the concept of homeschooling and now there's another layer. How much, how much responsibility is there as a parent to get involved in online learning? It looks like there is a bit of research to be done. So um, I was reading today, actually, which is quite interesting, and I'm just going to put it out there because I don't know the reasons and I think it's quite yeah. contradictory. But France today banned home learning, homeschooling. And oh, wow. the president banned homeschooling. So, I mean, I actually, it was a headline that came through. So I, I'm quite um, interested to explore that. But uh, that was just a uh, aside because I always, I'm not very good at concentrating on the point. But um, the, thing, uh, the thing is um, with online learning, I think the lower grades, you will need to expect a, a parent or a tutor or facilitator to be involved. Right. And um, the great, I mean, in the lower grades, as you get as you get more senior, then it will be more independent and more um, more more can be less involvement of the parent. But then there will be um, different needs in terms of social interaction, but it won't be the guidance of the parent. But um, I mean, I, I'm definitely in the foundation phase. I think it would be very naive to think a child can be um, homeschooled without involvement of, a, of an adult. So far, we've talked about the benefits. We've talked about the type of child that would need online learning. When we, when we think of readiness, um, I'm thinking of my littlies that needs to do grade R. And even, you know, um, going to high school for the first time and, and you know, there's a lot of um, concern, sometimes insecurities, excitements, a lot of feelings around that. In terms of online learning, what would you say, how important is it for readiness? Is it an advantage? Are they going to be more clever? Um, is it just another resource? How does, how does online learning, what role does it play in, in terms of readiness for, for our children in terms of their milestones and, and for moving on? Yeah, so online learning, so um, online learning in terms of online education and online learning as part of schooling is critical. And right. it will give them skills that they have to have. It, you, it, so, and we really need to remember that spectrum of the, the amount of time and the amount of learning is online. But they have, it won't, it will, 
it won't make them more clever because I'm sure everyone's child's already clever. <laughs> and um, but it's it will it will give them the skills that they need. So I mean, you can have a school that gets the best metric results with no technology, but will not prepare them for the careers and the the skills that they need for the job the job world. At the World Economic Forum is very clear on the fact that like one third of all jobs by 2025 that are now won't exist. 65% of our primary school children are will be, will be in um, jobs that don't exist now. And, um, and the only skills that we will have that will be able to not be automated will be run by creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, data literacy. And, and I think that's what that's what will make your child more clever. So through computing, through coding, through problem solving, they will understand and be able to be, be better, if we want to have a better word, to control the computer. So I think, so online education has two roles. One is learning the subject, but the other is learning the tech. And they're both really important. Important, yeah. I have one more question and it's, it's about, um, what, what this pandemic has taught us. Now, one of the things that we've discussed in this space before is the fact that it's almost become more normal to talk about our feelings and mental health and what this pandemic has taught us in terms of resilience or changing our businesses or how to move forward with the limited resources that we have. So all of a sudden, our children are also coming out different out of a pandemic. When we talk about readiness or even the children that we are... Um, creating or teaching out of a pandemic, we are looking at different skills. We are also looking at their well-being and mental health. And like you said, creativity and being able to do different things. Do you find that in your experience as someone that works with schools and education that, and I'm asking merely as a prediction, do you think that we'll have a different child on our hands that we would need to teach differently? And is online learning the solution? So um, we definitely, add, as when I was trying to do your role as a host when you disappeared, is um, we're definitely going to have a different child and a different parent and a different teacher. Yeah. And I have to say, I take my hat off to teachers um, and schools during this time. I mean, I know that um, I know that parents have been under a lot of stress. I think it's amazing what schools have achieved and the support schools have um, have given parents and students. And I mean, I, I, I work with teachers and I am blown away by the dedication to making sure that students are okay and that they, their learning and their support continues. So um, I think when, um, when we get back, we will, I, I, I just think we mustn't underestimate the fact of that COVID is going to have a long-term impact on us. We never mind the fact that if they're going to, the economy is going to affect families, um, the, health, the health is going to have affected families, the isolation is going to have affected families. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of, but then on the other hand, is a lot of people have thrived. And, and I think we also have to understand why children have thrived and look at. I know that some children have said it's the best thing that's ever happened to them. Yeah. And, they, and we have to understand why. So there are a few reasons. I know that some children, it means they haven't been bullied. And that is a huge thing to understand. And the other thing is they haven't been bored. Now, if a child is saying they haven't been bored, uh, that's also um, a huge thing. So if children have thrived, you need to understand why. And if children have struggled, you need to understand why. And that needs to come in when you return to school. That, that is what will make the environment. Um, but I think we all know, and the teachers that I work with are amazing, that it's not about, uh, I mean, the teachers will, will meet them where they're at. I mean, they won't like, your child's not going to be, they, they are so geared to meeting your children where they're at. There's a lot of questions and comments that are talking about implementation. Is it our duty to go and to help the school to apply what we loosely termed earlier, the, the, the Mary Kondo curriculum, you know, in our schools? Is it is it our duty or do we leave it up to the experts in education or 
or are we the deciders? You know, do we decide where our children go? And I mean, I know the answer for me, um, but what would you say as, as one of our experts? So I think, Ilana, you're the decider. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, think, um, I think parents need to um, put pressure on their schools if they aren't, um, if they aren't delivering, but they need to also respect what their schools um, are doing and have respect for the experts. So, um, I mean, schools, if, I mean, if you are at a school that does not have technology integrated, you need to put pressure. But if your school and most of the schools are looking, are, are addressing the values, the sports, the technology, the whole picture of the child and everything, I mean, you you will know. And if your child is happy, I think, um, I mean, we spend a lot of time with school. So, I mean, you will know, but I think the priority of integration and into a school is, it's not a debate anymore. I think that's really, and I think most schools understand that now. I hope. Well, Michelle, this is, we hope so. I remember there was a time in our schools where we were only worried about how long our children's hair is and whether it touches their collar or even religion in schools. And now we are out of a pandemic, busy changing education. So we want to thank you for your expertise and your time and the fact that you are out there helping so many people with your talent. iSchool Africa and also Think Ahead Education Solutions. This was a talk about online learning. You heard it, it's not the same as homeschooling. And so we will all go and research. iSchool Africa, Think Ahead Education, and one of the others that came up tonight was commonsense.org, which I will definitely go and check out. Michelle, I will see you at school. Yeah, and uh, really, if um, anyone, I'm very, very happy to, for anyone to contact me with, with any um, advice or resources and um, I also hope that you all have a good break because I know that it's been a tough, tough year. And so don't worry about, it'll be fine. And we, there's lots of opportunities that we can take from this. Thank you once again to everyone that has made this broadcast possible. And thank you to you for logging on. Thank you also for all your questions and comments, Michelle. It is an honor to know you and to have met you through this platform. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we now we say bye, Michelle. Bye, everyone.